All right, guys, today we are going to start with your two pinch pots that you already made. Um, yesterday, you left them in a bag and you wrapped them with paper towels to make sure that they did not dry out overnight. So you don't need a paper towel anymore and you don't need the bag anymore. So when you start, you can get rid of those two parts. The paper towels, let's just wait until directions are over, okay? Um, the paper towels are gonna be thrown away and the bags we're gonna reuse and save and put back, okay? So I have my two pinch pots. Um, these are a little bit more wet than, it would have been okay if they were a little more dry, but it's okay too. We can use them this way. So I have two pinch pots. Before I put them together, I wanna put the beads inside. I already have some beads made here for you guys. They're just little tiny pieces of clay. Um, you get to decide how many you want in there. You at least have to have one because this is a shaker assignment or a rattle assignment. Um, but whatever, you can have a bunch too if you want to. Um, we are going to actually just take this scrap paper that's in a stack right there next to the paper plates. And you're gonna make almost like a little spit wad, okay? So you put the ball in there, squeeze this all the way around it and just drop it in one side. I'm gonna put three in mine. So just take the hard piece of clay, make sure it's wrapped. All that paper, remember, will burn off in the kiln, um, but the paper helps the ball not to stick to the clay. If I didn't put this in here, it would stick to the edge of the pot and then it would not shake. It would not make a rattle noise. And you can put more than three if you want more than three. All right, when I am attaching two pieces of clay together, I'm always going to score and slip. So my first part is to score. Scoring is when I take a tool and I rough up the edge. And I'm gonna do that all the way around, just making little X's. You're making the Velcro of your clay, okay? Do it all the way around. Once you do it to one side, you do it to the other side. And you're gonna go all the way around. Okay? When you have both done, then you're gonna add your slip. Now, some teachers actually make slip. They put clay overnight in the water, and it just gets really muddy. To me, it's the same thing if I just take my finger and I dab, dab, dab the clay, or the part that I just roughed up, I'm making, I'm making the glue right there. But if I start rubbing, what's gonna happen to the rough part that I just did? It's just gonna disappear. So don't rub, we're just tapping the water on, okay? Then you're going to put your two pieces together. Now, you, you might have a part where it's like thicker or thinner, so you kind of want to think about where, like on this part, on this pot that this student did, it's lower over here and higher over here. I might want to put those two parts together so that I have the low and the high together. So I'm going to put those together, and then I'm going to start making these come together into one piece. You may need a coil if there's weak parts. Remember, a coil is just a little snake that you make. And when I make um, snakes in here, I put my fingers down and then I just start to spread them out, okay? I can put this on here for extra stability if I need it. One more tool I might wanna use is something like this. Um, and you're just gonna pull from one side to the other. We want this to become one piece of clay, okay? Now, it just made a big indent there, so I'm gonna need to add a coil. And then I'm just working on finger ironing all the way around, getting this all smoothed together. And then once it's all together, then I can worry about my shape. Then I can start pressing on it. If I wanna make a skull, remember I can press in the back, press up the chin. If I wanna make a sphere, I know you're making a ball, you're gonna to wanna to really get this rounded, right? After it's all smoothed together. All right, one thing I forgot. You have to have a vent hole or this will explode. So when I make a vent hole, can I use yours? Yeah. I'm gonna stick the um, needle in and I wanna go in a discreet place. So if it's like in the person's nose, if I made a, if I made a skull, if it's on the seam of the basketball, so it's not just like in the middle of the basketball, okay? You just push it in and then just do a little wiggle around and that'll be a vent hole, okay? You Don't have to do it on both forget, just one.